That's not good. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. As y'all just saw, it appears that I broke the plastic gears in my mini mill. And please, don't ask me what I was doing when it happened, because it wasn't pretty. These plastic gears are one of the most common failure points with the Sieg X2D mini mill platform. Some of the more robust versions of this mill, like the one from littlemachineshop.com, mitigate this issue with a direct drive motor. But this mill was one from Harbor Freight, and it came with the plastic gears. There is an option to replace these plastic gears, however, I felt like this was a good opportunity to upgrade with the Little Machine Shop belt drive modification. This will ensure that I never bust a gear again, as well as increase the spindle speed capacity of this mill and provide for quieter overall operation. I was actually surprised to find this top plastic gear in good shape since from what I understand, these are the ones that normally bust. My damaged gears are inside of the head. If you don't currently have busted gears on your mill, the belt drive modification is an easy bolt on and you don't need to remove the head. You would just need to ensure the gears are disengaged with a high low lever. However, in my case, I'd like to remove the broken gears before installing the belt drive system. The Little Machine Shop belt drive package comes with a set of instructions for how to remove the head from your mill and remove these gears. I did not 100% follow these instructions when removing the head of my mill, so you'll see some deviations from the instructions in this disassembly footage. I highly advise using the provided steps since my meandering method of dismantling the head resulted in some unnecessary wasted time. Once I got the head removed from the mill, I dumped out the broken gears. To give me some more room to work, I removed the Z-axis fine adjustment and fast adjustment handle. The broken gears were located on the idler shaft, which allows the switching between high and low speeds. To remove these gears, you can gently drive out that shaft with a soft face hammer. I decided to put that shaft back into my head without the gears on it, just to reduce the chances of trash and dust accumulating in the head. I left the plastic gears that are attached to the spindle alone, since there's no real reason to take these out. I also removed the handle from the high load speed adjustment, since it no longer serves a purpose. I then reinstalled the Z-axis adjustment mechanism, oiled the dovetails with some Ways oil, reinstalled the head on the mill, and connected the head to the air spring. Be sure to take your time when performing this operation, since the head can be a little heavy, and you'll need to line up the Z-axis gib appropriately. Using the Z-axis stop on your mill is highly recommended, so that the head doesn't want to fall down to the table. After I have the air spring hooked up, I also reinstalled the Z-axis travel stop at the top of the column. As you can see, mine is cracked, so I may need to replace this in the future. Once the head was back in the mill, I took a moment to remove the stock motor mount, since this will no longer be needed with the belt drive system. It's at this point we're ready to start installing the belt drive. Like I mentioned earlier, the belt drive kit comes with a very detailed set of instructions. The install is surprisingly easy and could be done in under an hour at a slow and careful pace. You can tell the development of this modification kit has gone through some iterations over the years and stands today as a refined system. We'll start off by removing the stock sleeve on the spindle. This is where your large pulley will eventually be going. A plastic sleeve is provided in the kit to cover the idler shaft. It's designed to have a very tight fit so as to help hold the shaft in position. To get it over the idler shaft, I heated it up with a heat gun. Once the sleeve was soft enough to go over the shaft and situated, we can then look to install the new motor mount. I would advise removing the Z-axis mechanism cover. I didn't do this right off the bat and I wish that I did. I tightened the provided bolts down snugly on the aluminum mount and everything fit up nicely. Once the motor mount is attached to the head, we can install our large pulley onto the spindle shaft and then our spindle shaft nut. Remember this nut has left-handed threads. When removing my spindle nut, I forgot to disengage the set screw so my threads are a little gummed up. I cleaned up the threads a little with a file and then had to use some leverage to get the spindle nut back into its appropriate location. Once you have the spindle nut snugged up on top of the large pulley, reinsert the set screw. Next, we'll take the original drive gear off the motor by first removing the retaining ring and then sliding the gear off. The drive pulley will then fit onto the shaft. Make sure the standoff is facing towards the motor and the small pulley is outward. When the pulley is bottomed out on the motor, you can snug up the set screw. We'll then be mounting the motor onto the swiveling motor mount. I placed the motor gently on top of the head in order to ensure I had the appropriate orientation. Specifically, I wanted my cables to fall in the same place they were originally. I then took the mounting bracket off of the head in order to securely tighten the motor to the bracket with the supplied screws. Once the mount was attached to the motor, I affixed the swivel mount onto the main motor bracket. 
Make sure to install the belt at this time, since it's the easiest time to get it in there. To install the tension adjustment keeper, first remove the handle. This allows you to easily thread it onto the mount. Make sure you use the supplied quarter inch washer so that you don't maul the slot over time. At this point, you can set the belt in either the low or high end speed setting. The low end setting is from zero to 1700 RPMs, which is likely the most appropriate setting to leave your machine in for most milling and drilling operations. The high end pulleys will allow you to get up to 4300 RPMs. I then reconnected the control box, zip tied my cables, notated the new speeds with a Sharpie, removed the plastic protective film, and tested this thing out. I've been using this new belt drive for a week now, and so far I really like it. It is significantly quieter than the stock gears, and I don't need to worry about plastic gears breaking in my mill. This is the second modification I've purchased for this mill from LittleMachineShop.com, the first being the air shock tension system. So far, neither of these mods have disappointed me, and I find them both to be of high quality. If you're interested in the air shock installation, I'll put a detailed video guide in the cards of this video. As a knife maker, I use this mill all the time for making tools, squaring up stock, milling and guard slots, and a plethora of other tasks. These modifications simply make the mill nicer to use and more robust. I'll make sure to put links to these modifications in the description box below. With that, I hope you all really enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Like always, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Thank you.